I am very much in favor of parental rights uh, for certain types of things. Do we have a right to drive while we're texting? Uh, you know, studies have demonstrated that those are very dangerous things to do. So it becomes a public safety issue. So you have to be able to separate out uh, our rights versus the rights of the society in which we live because we're all in this thing together. Dr. Ben Carson on this program at this desk yesterday <laughs> explaining why immunizations are a necessity. But the debate about parental control over kids getting vaccinated continues. Not everybody's on board with mandatory vaccines. Yeah, Pew Research poll shows that the opinion of the general public and that of the scientific community differ greatly. The poll shows that while only 68% of people agree childhood vaccinations should be mandatory, 86% of scientists say they should. And there are other scientific topics. There you see it on childhood vaccinations, but uh, all sorts of different questions about different issues where there is disparity between the quote scientific community and the community at large. Let's talk more about that as we welcome back in the Newsmax.com uh, managing editor, Alina Hernandez. We also welcome my old congressional colleague, the former chair of the House Science Committee, Bob Walker, Skyping in from his Washington DC office. And to round out this great group of guests, <laughs> it's Newsmax deputy health editor, Nick Tate, co-author of Da Vinci's Baby Boom Survival Guide. Uh, Bob Walker, to you first science and political science. The public is saying, we don't know so much about these vaccinations. The scientific community says, you gotta have them. Why do you believe there is the gulf, the skepticism with the general public? Well, two things I think, uh, JD. I think that uh, there has been a lot of exploitation of the uh, whole risk aversion uh, problem that we have in our society. Uh, I th think it's a problem because it manifests itself in, in some uh, pretty perverse ways. Also, it seems to me that scientists have allowed themselves uh, to uh, have their credibility undermined uh, when they allow uh, their work to get uh, politically manipulated. And those two things uh, come together, and in the case of vaccines, I think, uh, to the detriment of the public. And Alina, uh, another hot button issue, genetically modified foods and foods grown with pesticides and whether or not they're safe to eat. 88% of scientists say they're safe to eat. 37% of the general public believes they're safe. Why such a huge gap? Well, I think that the public is really feeling the effects of some of these some of these issues. I mean, they don't they, we don't have enough labeling on foods. We're not able to clearly make a decision. It's almost like we have a very paternalistic government system that they tell us, yes, it's all OK, when in reality, you know, we want to know what's in our food. We should have a right to know what's in our food and it should be properly labeled. So I think there's a huge, huge suspicion amongst the publics, especially with the increase of these autoimmune diseases that you're seeing, that, uh, you know, people are suspicious. Let me turn to Nick Tate, who uh, monitors all the medical situations here. Uh, we understand the same kind of questionnaire. Eighty-two percent of scientists say the growing world population is a problem. Only 52 percent of the community at large believe so. What about sustaining the people populating the planet, Nick? Is the scientific community right? Well, you know, I think that the reason there's a disconnect on this issue and all the others that, that you've mentioned is I think we're becoming a nation of skeptics, and it's not just skepticism when it comes to science and scientists. We're skeptical of anything anyone in a position of authority says, professors, scientists, doctors, members of Congress, the President of the United States. Part of that's being fed by the vast numbers of uh, websites out there that are promoting different ideas that conflict with what scientists say. I think there's another factor, and that is that a lot of Americans don't have a basic understanding of what basic science says and basic science concepts. The National Science Foundation every year does a survey of what Americans know and don't know about science. When they did this survey last year, they found that one in four Americans believe that the sun orbits the earth. About half of Americans don't know that antibiotics will not treat viruses, only treat bacterial infections, and about the same number 
don't believe that the, the universe began with a big explosion, the Big Bang uh, theory. So I think that it's a couple things, but I think a lot of it is deep skepticism that's fed by all the information, no, the noise that's out there online. See, Nick, I thought when people were asked about the Big Bang theory, they'd say it's a sitcom rather than a, than a theory of how uh, the universe was created. Be that as it may, we're just getting started with this discussion. After the break, Nick, Bob, and Alina rejoin us. We hope you will too as we continue this thoughtful discussion. And my old pal Bob Walker will talk about the oxymoron of political science. All that and more coming up as America's Forum continues. Let's continue the discussion on the disconnection between the science community and the community at large. And uh, we're pleased to be connected via Skype with my old congressional colleague, Bob Walker, joins us from Washington, Newsmax.com managing editor, Alina Hernandez, and Newsmax deputy health editor, Nick Tate. Now, Bob Walker, got to get to a result from the Pew poll we've been discussing, and it has to deal with climate change. Here's, here's the way they put the question, or the results. 87% of scientists think climate change is mostly due to human activity, while the general public is evenly split. Bob, I read that and I got a way, problem with the way they asked the question, but uh, what about the whole thing with climate change and the real gulf between the scientific community and uh, the rest of us? Well, this is one of the places where I think scientists have, have reduced their credibility. For example, recently, uh, when they uh, declared that uh, the, uh, 2014 was the hottest year on record. Well, it turns out that they were measuring a, a one hundredth of one degree, and it also turns out that they were only 38 percent sure of their calculation, and yet they put that out in a way that could be used politically. In my mind, what that does is undermines the credibility of the climate science, uh, and at, at the same time, uh, assures that politicians rather than um, uh, climate scientists are, are uh, are propounding the uh, public message on it. Uh, so Nick, uh, my pal Bob Walker talks about this thing. In your mind, this particular disconnection. Well, you know, I think it definitely comes from a kind of distrust of uh, the scientific community. And, you know, I heard somebody say today that it's funny, we live in a culture where we trust a groundhog to predict the end of winter, but not doctors who tell us that the importance of childhood vaccines that, that are really important. You know, I think, I think the bottom line is that scientists have been historically, traditionally uncomfortable talking in the media. They don't like speaking in one voice and saying, here's what we know. This is the truth. This is what you need to know. There's a lot of, I had a, 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 a when I was in school, I had a professor tell me that there are a lot of two-armed scientists in the world who say things like, on the one hand, there's this point of view, and on the other hand, there's this point of view. The other issue is that science is changing all the time. What was once believed in the 50s and the 60s has proven not to be true, and that leads to a sense that, well, should we believe anything that scientists say? My opinion, consumers really need to pay close attention to who's saying what, how strong the, the evidence is, is the source credible, and for scientists, for goodness sake, let's hear some folks stand right. up and talk more definitively about what we know and what we don't know. And Nick, you were, you were bringing up the 50s. Public opinion could be swayed by what was seen on television. Let's take a look at this ad from the 1950s. Yes, folks, the pleasing mildness of a camel is just as enjoyable to a doctor as it is to you or me. In a nationwide survey, doctors in all branches of medicine were asked what and were included. And according to this nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. <gasps> that might have been true for cigars, and maybe if you were in Cuba. Alina, your thoughts? We see doctors back then smoking and then later finding out that it causes cancer. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, that, that's exactly to Nick's point. You know, science has evolved. We know that cigarettes make us sick, and, uh, you know, th that's exactly why the public is so skeptical. I mean, we, we know that we are always evolving. Science is always finding new information. There's also been a lot of scientists who've been discredited with some of their work, and, and you have a skeptical public that trusts the Internet more than their own physician. But again, regardless of the risk of smoking, people do want those Cuban cigars, Alina, as we were talking about the whole relationship with Cuba. Nick Tate, uh, last word on this. You've been taking a closer look at these things. 
Well, you know, what I would say is as a consumer, if you're trying to sort out uh, the truth from the, f the fact from the fiction, a couple things. Consider the source. How credible is it? Uh, is it, is it uh, someone who knows a topic? Is, it, is there consensus in this issue? Secondly, where is the information provided? Is it in a press release or is it in a peer-reviewed medical or science journal where there are controls on that information? And finally, seek out an expert. If you're trying to decide whether to vaccinate your kids, for goodness sake, don't listen to the advi advice of a former Playboy playmate. Listen to your doctor, your pediatrician. That's the person who's going to give you the best advice. And we'll never confuse you, Nick, as a uh, playmate, however, just to go outside, you know, as kids playing seesaw. But uh, you're an expert on what's going on with the baby boom. Nick Tate's new book, uh, Da Vinci's <laughs> Baby Boomer Survival Guide. You can get your copy. Find out more at the website babyboomers711.com. Our thanks to Nick and Alina and Bob, and we're coming back right after this.